a new formulation of Intivio um, was de developed so that patients would have the option to take uh, Intivio long term as subcutaneous treatment and self administration uh, or continue with the already established uh, intravenous formulation that requires. Uh, dosing in a, an infusion unit or hospital or some or treatment unit some or in an office infusion unit something like that so uh, the development of this new subcutaneous uh, formulation really gives patients great options with long-term treatment with intivio to uh, uh, self-administer and dose at home So this is really a post hoc analysis of uh, long-term extension data and so this is often done and so every year or so over five years there will be an examination of the data, uh, there will be data cuts, but the study is intended to go out five years. But FDA, the, the filing, the biological license application uh, to the FDA has already been submitted and things are in the works for approval of sub-Q Antivio uh, and that approval is anticipated in, in 2020. It may be early in 2020, it may be in the middle of 2020, it's not absolutely unknown but it could be, it could be early and then there are going to be uh, different transitions uh, that patients have the option to proceed with going from their current IV formulation to sub-Q or new starts, you know, who go on um, IV and TIVO. They may plan to transition or anticipate to transition as early as week six. Yeah, I think the data that we have so far indicates that we can transition and several different ways and in practice it's going to be transitioning likely in even more ways and it, it looks like all of them work that the pharmacokinetics of this new formulation is favorable and when I say favorable the blood levels are high higher than what is uh, than the blood levels for the approved every eight week IV formulation so it, it looks good. It looks like something that works as a practical transition pharmacokinetically as well as convenience wise for many, many patients. Certainly for the majority of patients who are taking Intivio, it looks like a slam dunk and, whether, and it may work for all, but it uh, certainly looks um, very practical for the majority of patients and then it's just that sort of shared decision making with patients do you want to have IV infusions long term or do you want subcutaneous infusions and and whatever works out best for that individual